This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the Lenovo Yoga C930. They were adding a C now to the name, something with the new design and the new line going on. So we reviewed the Yoga 910, the Yoga 920. So this is the, the, the next generation, basically, of that design. It's still very thin. It's very premium. It's very light. But the new thing here is the watch band hinge is gone on this model. And instead, we have a sound bar. See the perforations over here? Yeah, there's two little stereo drivers here, more like the tweetery end of things for this sound right here. And then we have two subwoofery speakers down firing. So the idea is because because this is a two-in-one convertible with the 360-degree yoga hinge, no matter what direction you're using it, you're going to have some sound facing at you. That's not the only new thing on this 13.9-inch Windows 10 Ultrabook with Intel 8th generation Ultrabook U-series CPUs. It has a pen, and we've had pen support in the Yoga 900 series before, so that's not new. But now there is a pen silo here at the end of the hinge as well. So Lenovo's been playing with hinges for a while in their Android tablet line with the barrel hinges, had speakers and projectors and all sorts of things. So it is good to see them trying to innovate here and come up with some new things as they compete with the HP Spectre 360 and others. We're going to look at it now. So as always with the Lenovo Yoga series in the premium line here, that 13.9 inch display called 14 inches is nice because it gets you a bit more screen real estate and it really doesn't add to the weight. It's three pounds, which is 1.36 kilograms. It's slim. It's nice. Now there's two display options. There's a 1920 by 1080 full HD display and there's a 4K display. Both of these are glossy and they're touch screens and they support that pen that is included in the silo built into the laptop, which is the usual Wacom AES pen with 4,096 levels of pressure sensitivity. Something they're bringing over from the ThinkPad is the rechargeable pen. Usually these pens have a quadruple A battery inside, but the little versions, just like on the ThinkPad, have little charging contacts. So when you stick it in the silo, it charges up. So you never have to worry about charging or replacing the battery rather on the pen. That's good. Now, when it comes to the display on this, we're going to talk about this more, but it really does parallel what HP does with their displays. Teasing you there, aren't I? Another important thing, don't confuse this with the similarly named, why did Lenovo do this? Lenovo Yoga Book C930, which is the replacement for the 10-inch Yoga Book, the two dual display screen, more affordable kind of product. Different one altogether. We'll be reviewing that one separately. Now, this says Intel 8th generation Ultrabook 15 watt CPUs inside with Intel HD or UHD 620 graphics. You can see the spec options up there on the screen right now. We have the, the, the model that Best Buy is pushing right now, which is a perfectly good configuration. As the full HD display has a Core i7 8550U, 12 gigs of DDR4 2400 megahertz RAM, a little bit of an oddball number there. It is soldered on, so you won't be upgrading yourself either. 16 gigs is the maximum that they offer, by the way. And ours has a 256 gig. PCIe NVMe M.2 SSD, which is the fast kind of SSD. If you built to order, you can go all the way up to two terabytes. Now, if you really max this creature out, our Best Buy model is $12.99, which isn't too painful. But if you max this out, you go with the 4K display, the i7, 16 gigs of RAM, and a one terabyte SSD, you're looking at $1,959 currently on Lenovo's website. It would be more obvious if you went with the two terabyte. But wait, there's more. There's the color, there's two colors. You have the gunmetal look here, there's a mica look. And there's also the glass lid line, which they actually list separately on their website. And if you like the glass lids, they've done this before at the Yoga 900 series. That's going to add about $200 to the price tag. I'm sure we'll see some holiday specials around that too, if you like the glass lid. It has far field microphones, so you can chit chat with Cortana, even if you're up to 12 feet away. I know some of you are into that, the voice command thing and all that. And also we've got something else that came over from the ThinkPad line, which is the privacy shutter over the webcam. It's a slider, so if you're paranoid about who might be watching you when you're having way too much fun doing whatever it is you do when you're at home by yourself, well, this will save you from any embarrassment. There's a backlit keyboard, and it's a pretty good keyboard. Key keyboard travel on this is decent as Ultrabooks that are slim and light go. I like it quite fine. A well-behaved trackpad on board, and the usual Intel 9260 Wi-Fi 8011AC with Bluetooth on board. So well-configured machine as you would expect. Nice metal unibody aluminum design going on here. Of course, the bottom plate is removable like all of them. We'll take a look at the internals to see how you get in there. But the, there's no flex on this. It feels premium. It looks premium. There's a slight difference in the two-tone finishes. I leave it up to you if you like that sort of thing versus a unified look. I think it looks pretty good though. 
This, the good news is this has two Thunderbolt 3 ports. One of them is used for charging, and they're full four-lane PCIe fast Thunderbolt 3, for those of you who are into that sort of thing, external eGPUs, all that sort of thing. Obviously, docks. That's the great thing these days. And plugging any kind of display you want in, and you'll need to use it for that because the rest of the ports, they just really aren't there. You have one USB-A 3.1 port. You have a headphone jack, and that is it. No display port, no HDMI, because they figure you're going to be using that Thunderbolt 3 with dongles and adapters to connect up anything else that you want to connect up, including you could do Ethernet as well. There is no SD card slot. Sorry about that. So let's talk about those display options. So we have the 1920 by 1080 display. The 4K display is probably the one that you're going to see and fall in love with at the stores. And this is a lot like the HP Spectre X360, where they put a competent but not stellar, not woohoo, you know, kind of display in the 1080p model. But that 4K display really is more vibrant and higher in contrast looking. The 4K model with this supports Dolby Vision, not the 1080p version. They look at the display metrics on screen. They're competent. They're not classic. Leading. The one thing that I don't like about it is the fact that it is really glary and glossy and there looks to be more of an air gap when you look at it than we usually see with premium devices these days where usually it doesn't look like there's a, a space between the top layer of glass and the display itself. It's not the end of the world. It's not a bad display at all. It's quite nice. If you're upgrading from a three or four year old laptop, you'll probably think it's just totally awesome. But as it goes versus some of the competition with higher quality 1080p displays, it's okay. It's not great. 4K, I'm sure, will be the bee's knees. Drawback with 4K, of course, is lower battery life, generally speaking. And this one really rocks when it comes to battery life. It has a 60 watt hour battery. That's a pretty beefy battery for an Ultrabook this size and these power requirements. So that means with the full HD display, we've been doing eight hours, no trouble, not trying hard. Display set to about 150 nits, doing light to moderate productivity work and streaming video. You could probably stretch out more if you're really being conservative with your power settings and your brightness. That's good. And it comes with a 65 watt charger, a traditional small brick style charger. More than the 45 watts that's really needed, that's just to help it charge up faster. So how about thermals and performance? It's an Ultrabook. It's not a mobile workstation or a gaming laptop. This is not something that you're going to be playing the latest Tomb Raider on or something like that. Duh. But still, as Ultrabooks go, the U-series CPUs are quad-core CPUs these days with Intel 8th generation. You can get with an i5 or an i7 CPU inside. They don't typically run as hot as those 6-core mobile workstations, but some of them do, like the HP Spectre X360. And this one does too in terms of core temperatures. I, you can see in the benchmarks here that I was really surprised in PC Mark 10, which isn't the most demanding, though it's a long-running benchmark, so thermal heat will build up, that it was surpassing 90 degrees centigrade on the CPU. CPU cores, 100 degrees centigrade is allowable maximum before it really starts throttling back. It will occasionally throttle if you're making it work, work really hard. Say you're using Adobe Premiere and you're outputting a long 4K video like we do, for example. In general practice, I don't think I would worry about it too much. The, the heat to the touch, though, isn't bad. There's actually, instead of the usual single fan you see in an Ultrabook with integrated graphics, there are two fans, very thin fans, because it's a very thin laptop, inside. And I think that's mostly to wick the air out and keep it off of the bottom surface so it doesn't feel as burning hot to the touch, say, as something like the HP Spectre X360 tends to feel. Performance itself on this, other than the occasional throttling, which is not an unusual thing for Ultrabooks to do when you push them very hard anyway, to be honest. But the metrics are where we expect to see with benchmarks and the performance in programs like Adobe Photoshop and compiling code, that sort of thing. It's good. The Wacom AES Pen experience on this is as ever, very good. See, the palm rejection on this is great. I'm left-handed, so I really tend to put my hand on the glass a lot more than you righties would. Liking this a lot, it is better than Entrig digitizers, which is what's used in the Microsoft Surface Pro line these days and what's used in the HP Spectre X360. In terms of palm rejection, this is better. Now, let's check out our diagonal lines for jitter. Not fantastic. This is not pro artist level when it comes to to line jitter. I think Entrig may have the win there in the Surface Pro 6 when it comes to that. Still, it's very usable. It feels very fluid and very nice and very silky. And by the way, if you can't stand using such a teeny pen like this, if you get a hand cramp, you can use a larger pen again. It's Wacom AES, so Lenovo's own ThinkPad Pro Pen works just as well. 
on this. And then if you don't happen to want to order that online and source it, the Wacom Bamboo Ink that's sold at Best Buy stores in the United States, around 60 or 70 bucks or so, dual protocol pen supports both Ntrig and this. It works as well. It works nicely. One thing to note, pun intended here, is that for those of you who like to download Wacom field drivers from Wacom's website for Wacom AES stuff, it wouldn't load on this. It said it wasn't compatible. Of course, it really is, but they're doing something funny with the driver there with Lenovo's on. So there is no control panel or anything to control the pressure levels of the pan or anything like that. Looking at the bottom side, you can see that there are two rubber strips here to give it a little bit of grip and elevation on the table. They're not particularly tall, but it doesn't need that much elevation because there's no ventilation here. That means you're not going to smother it if you put it on a blanket on your bed or something like that. Taking the bottom cover off is very easy. There are Torx T5 screws just along right there. You can see nothing uh, <laughs> horrible like some of HP's laptops. There's Spectre and ones where you have to pull off rubber feet and all that kind of thing to get to all the screws. So you just unscrew those and then you pull this right off. And there's the underside. And voila, our internals. Here are our two down-firing, they call them subwoofer speakers. They do handle mid-range as well. I've stuck my ear close to check that. There's our battery right there, should you need to service that in the future. The pen garage, and there's the spring-loading thing so that the pen springs in and out. And there is our M.2 SSD right there, so that's upgradable if you like. And here is our Intel Wi-Fi card, and two very teeny tiny fans, and our single heatsink running over this combined CPU GPU here, Intel Integrated Graphics again with our Intel 8th generation CPUs. And that's about all that you have access to here. Now, I know some of you are going to ask for Smackdowns with some devices. I'll talk about the HP Spectre X360 a bit in a moment. And the Dell XPS 13, I bet you're going to ask her, but they're really very different kind of products. The Dell XPS 13 is a traditional laptop. It doesn't do the 363 360 degree thing rather. It's, it's not meant to be used a tablet in 10 mode. So I think between those, you really have to decide which kind of laptop you want more than anything else. So that's the Lenovo Yoga C930, and it's a very nice laptop. It should be at this, this price, shouldn't it? Speaking of the price, it probably will come down starting Black Friday. Lenovo typically has some good sales on their website, and so does Best Buy as the holiday shopping season kicks in. So if you like this and you can have a little bit of patience, it may come down in price as well. Right now, obviously, it's on the expensive end of things, but particularly if you go for the glass lid and you max out the specs on it. When you're getting close to $2,000 for just an ultrabook it seems like a bit much but the sweet spot really is like the best buy configuration that we have here it's pretty good configuration and the price on this is pretty decent too versus the hp specter like i said it depends on which brand you prefer some people have very strong preferences and which look you like i mean that specter x360 is very pretty and it too runs hot but you know what one thing about this is the dual fan design does help it to be less hot where it touches you at least whereas the specter x360 does get physically hot to the touch both of them have pretty high core temperatures though I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos and thumbs up if you like this vid.